All right, it looks like 1.15 on my, uh, my uh, machine here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome, we are doing a modified focus group today. We were gonna do um, a different activity, but we had uh, a smaller turnout than we were anticipating. So we decided rather than put you in breakout groups and bring you back, uh, we would just keep this uh, we would keep this to one happy group and we would share some of our best thinking. We are looking at ways to re-envision Vermont Farm Show and Agricultural Fairs. And we welcome all thoughts today. Uh, you're welcome to use the chat if you uh, don't wanna speak. You're welcome to unmute your mic if you have some opportunities and we will give you plenty of opportunities. And I already mentioned the hand raise feature. So, Today, just to kick us off and to sort of set the stage for us, we've got our three panelists and we're uh, going to, first of all, bring up Dave, Dave Martin, there you are. And Dave, if you wanna go ahead and unmute, we'll go ahead and get started. Am I, uh, oops. There I am. You're perfect. Uh, yes, yeah. all right, thank you. I'm president of the Vermont Farm Show, and I'm just going to do a little talk about the, the history of the farm show. The current uh, layout of the farm show was started in 1957, and at, in 1957, dairy was by far the largest sector of the Vermont farm economy, and dairy still is the largest sector of the Vermont farm economy, but there have been some big changes because in 1957, uh, there were 9,512 dairy farms in Vermont. In 2021, there are 575 dairy farms in Vermont. So uh, that's a big change in terms of agriculture. And I, I think the farm show has historically uh, tried to reach all sections of Vermont agriculture. Uh, Kyla, could you put up the... Uh, link to the purpose of the farm show. Uh, I'll, we can leave that up while I'm talking. So, so agriculture in Vermont has, has continued to change. And I think currently there are a lot of uh, efforts to expand agriculture in Vermont, to su support small scale agriculture so that farmers can make, make a decent living. I personally feel that one of the ways to support Vermont agriculture is to educate the public, to understand how, understand about agriculture. And then when they understand Vermont agriculture and get connected to it, uh, they're more willing to support agriculture by buying Vermont products. So I, I think part of the, the function of the Vermont Farm Show and the other uh, agricultural fairs is to educate the public about agriculture in Vermont. And I think that's sort of our, one of our biggest, uh, biggest goals. So that's essentially what I have to say about uh, the Vermont Farm Show. Uh, and, you wanna and, say, Dave, do you wanna just say when and where the farm show typically takes uh, place? Okay, yeah, they, in 2022, the farm, this year's farm show will be February 1st, 2nd and 3rd at the Champlain Valley Expo. Uh, we you can we do have a web page uh, you can go to is Vermont Farm Show just Google it and you'll get there and there's a lot of information there one of the the neat things there is there's a in the history section there is a uh, video from 1993 it was at the Vermont Farm Show at the at the Barry Auditorium in uh, in 1993 uh, I always find those historical uh, videos interesting. And good. Has everybody been to the farm show? Give me a thumbs up if you've been to the farm show. Okay. Whether it was in Barrie yeah. or S. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So one of the things we're looking for today uh, is suggestions from the audience to additions or changes that we can make to the Vermont Farm Show to, to help people understand its role to in, increase its impact on, on supporting agriculture in Vermont. Um, so that's, that's what I personally am looking for, uh, it, 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 those suggestions and thoughts. Uh, they're all, all the thoughts and suggestions are welcome. 
and uh, I'd like to look, for, look forward. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, reach me at settlementfarm at comcast.net. Um, if you have any particular questions for me in the Vermont Farm Show, uh, be more than happy to re respond to those or respond to the questions that come up now. Thank you. Karen, I see you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm Carrie Patterson from Farm First. You just muted yourself, Karen. I just had to unmute myself there. <laughs> um, Dave, I, you know, I've been to the farm show um, for several years with Farm First, um, exhibiting with the um, Farm Health Coalition. And I wondered, with as you describe where the show's trying to go and the purpose, um, it sounds like there is some effort that or desire to um, engage the public, maybe again, the non-farming public to come and be educated and encounter the ag sector in a way to, uh, um, you know, again, help them earn, learn about what farming of their neighbors is about and what it involves. Um, and then also to harness their support for their friends and neighbors who are working in agriculture. I wonder what, what you're doing for 2022 with that specific objective of putting out there, whether it's an, um, you know, the, six, the CAX News or VPR to try to not pitch in a negative way, but put the farm show out there to the non-farming public and say, here's why you should come and then have, have that focus also be reflected in what happens at the show for the public. So Karen, that is a great question. I'm gonna give Dave a few minutes to think about that because I wanted the rest of the panelists to introduce themselves first and then we'll, that's part of what we're gonna be spending all of our time on. So feel free if we don't get to that uh, to prompt us again. All right, so next up we have got uh, Diane Norris, who's coming to us from Addison County, representing Addison County Field Days. Diane, what would you like to share? Uh, good afternoon. I guess um, my thought process here today is, um, you know, what can we do to bring more of the farm to plate group to our fair? Um, in the past, we've, well, in 2019, we offered everyone on the acorn list to come and exhibit their um, their farm for free. We were just going to set up one tent for strictly that, and everyone that would be in there would would just be uh, you know doing a promotion for their home farm products. And uh, we got zero people to reply. So I think um, and when we when we reached out to them, uh, the biggest complaint was nobody had the time. They couldn't give up five days and there are, you know, one or two person operation and couldn't give up one person to be at the fair while the other one was at home doing all the work. So I understand that. I guess from our fair point of view, we like to incorporate as many local people at our fair. We find that the more local people we have participating, the larger the attendance. People like to come and watch their neighbors do something. So our goal would be to, you know, what do we need to do so that we can grow that a little more than, than where we're at? Um, we do a, um, a Vermont Products Dinner on Tuesday night. Um, it normally sells out every year. It's 100% uh, Vermont, um, Vermont products. Um, all of the food is donated by our local restaurants. And it says um, where they bought their food, which market it came from, and you know how they prepared it. So that's, I mean, that's one good thing that we do. But we'd really like to just, we'd like to get more participation. So I guess my goal for this meeting would be, what can we do from a fair point of view to make it doable for a small farm family to to come and and at least advertise what they're doing. I know with COVID, uh, you know, a couple of the people that we buy locally from, you know, we have to put our list in ahead of time to make sure that what we want is there because buying local really got big last year. So, you know, what can we do to make sure that continues? 
uh, as far as my, my fair um, persona, uh, this is my 36th year on Addison County Fair and Field Days. Um, I was a vice president for 22 years and this is my six year as a president. So I, I live and breathe field days, love it, donate as much of my time as possible. Um, in my business career, I spent uh, 35 years doing dairy nutrition and recently retired. So, you know, what can I say? I've just got more time for field days. And that's where I'm at. Awesome. All right. All right. What did I do? What did I do? So, okay, now we're going to head north the interstate and Abby uh, from Franklin County Field Days is going to share a little bit. So Abby, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I am from the Franklin County Field Days. So we are just about as far north in Vermont as you can get. And we focus a lot on agriculture, specifically how youth impact agriculture. So our goal is to bring the youth in because that's where we think this industry is going. There's a lot of farms that are going out of business, but then you also have a couple kids that are hobby farmers who are in local 4-H or FFA groups who are looking to get into it. And we wanna see what they can add to the industry and what they can add to our fair. Um, our fair does a lot with flower shows, maple. Um, we also have a ton of food vendors we try to show as much agriculture as possible, whether that's through oxen poles, uh, I mean, oxen poles, horse poles. Uh, we also do gymkhanas and things like that. So just anything that could bring people in and get them to experience things that they wouldn't usually experience. Um, we think that when they see it, they're gonna be more interested in it, whether that's walking through the barns and talking to the kids we have found that that's really helpful in bringing news coverage and newspapers in is a great way to get that information out to the public. Um, I think our goal of this seminar is to just see what ideas everyone has as to how we can bring more agriculture to our fair. Even with farms going out of business, we wanna keep our fair agriculturally centered um, and just teach the public about, about it. Okay, hey, great, thank you. So uh, let me just tell you, I'm Mary Peabody. I'm with the University of Vermont Extension and I'm here to be your facilitator. We want you to put your big thinking, your biggest thinking caps on today. Uh, and we're gonna walk you through a little bit of a process. And uh, you can think from the perspective of the farm show, which you heard a little bit about, we have two representatives from two field days, but that's not all the field days in Vermont. We have a number of field days. We also have a number of other opportunities where ag and the public uh, engage. And so whatever hat you currently have on, we'd like you to think as broadly as possible. There are no bad ideas. We're willing to entertain everything. Um, we will not take the time today or have the time to necessarily do a lot of uh, sort of judging, but um, it would be great to, uh, to, to get some thinking. And then our goal is to basically uh, consolidate everything we hear today into sort of a report and use that as the first step on a ladder to try to create sort of a multi-year strategic initiative that's going to get uh, the you know, more vendors, more farmers, more people engaged, and more of consumers through the gates, as if you will, so that we can really increase sort of the, uh, you know, the interaction between the consumer and the farmers and give the farmers an opportunity to create sort of these, these uh, really important regional communities that they're all part of when they're, they're part of these um, activities. So having said all that, um, it would be great if we could get some of you folks to introduce yourselves, just quickly your name and where you're from. That would be awesome, just so we'll kind of know who's, whoops, who's who, and I can. So uh, let's see, let me, we've. Emily, are you, if you're there, could you introduce yourself quickly? Sure thing. Sorry, I have a washing machine running pretty close <laughs> in the background, so I hope you can hear it's, me. All right. It's our world in Zoom. 
<laughs> uh, I'm Emily Lepuski. I'm fairly new to the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. I am the Marketing and Export Program Lead for the Development Division. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's see. How about Gina? Hi there. Um, my name is Gina Clitheroe. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also with the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. And my role um, is I work with as a grant manager with the Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and the Produce Safety Program. Um, and so we've supported some projects with marketing and, and, um, and at different types of events. So happy to be learning more about these efforts. Fantastic. And Jake. Hi everyone, Jake Claro, uh, the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund, the Farm to Plate Director. Um, and yeah, long, long time attendee now at the farm show. Um, I, live, I live in Barry City and I hear oftentimes about what it was like when it was in Barry. Um, and so, yeah, also just looking forward to uh, participating in this conversation and, and helping, um, helping you all uh, in, in this strategic effort. So thanks. Awesome. Uh, Joe Connor. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, I am Jill O'Connor. I'm from efficiency Vermont. I work a lot with the ag folks, uh, throughout the state, both in the dairy industries, um, horticultural industries, pretty much covering anybody, uh, that needs some help in the ag world. Uh, kind of here, we've always had a booth at the farm show, or we've had for many years had a booth at the farm show, uh, helping to promote energy efficiency in both the residential buildings as well as in the dairy farms and any of the farm buildings as well. Uh, so just kind of here to check and see what, what's going on with the industry, where we're, we're looking at going and where we might be able to help out some more. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Carrie. Uh, I'm Carrie Patterson. I live up in Hardwick. Uh, I work with the Farm First program. If you're not familiar with that, it's a um, partnership between an EAP program and the uh, state of Vermont um, Agency of Ag, Food and Markets. And we are a resource and a um, mental health support service for farmers and farm families. And we, um, we actually have a session after this one about um, systems of support for not only farmers and farm families, but marginalized communities, BIPOC folks, um, the migrant workers and all those things. So we're very interested um, in these platforms like the farm show field days as places where farmers are, the public is, and we can help normalize uh, seeking assistance, getting support for yourself and your families around all the complexities that everybody's dealing with and kind of break down some of those barriers in the ag community that, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and just forge through despite what it costs. So um, really uh, looking forward to being back at the farm show in February and I'm glad to be here and participate in this discussion. Awesome. Uh, Julie, do you want to jump in? Sure. Um, my name is Julie Wolcott. I live in Fairfield. Um, lifelong farmer um, and recent addition to the Vermont Farm Show Board as the Rural Vermont Representative. So, uh, and we're excited to be hearing your ideas on how to improve what we have to offer. Um, also, a, a yearly uh, participant at the Franklin County Field Day. So I'm really glad to have Abby here and joining us. Terrific. Uh, Christina, sweet. Okay. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself there. Um, I'm Christina Swede. I'm at the Vermont Agency of Agriculture. I work in the Ag Development Division on produce safety and 
providing grants to Vermont specialty crop industries and produce growers. And I was also one of the folks who helped organize consumer night at the farm show for um, many years. And we really enjoyed that opportunity to kind of bring the public into the farm show and do some of that ag literacy and, you know, just have kind of a exciting time. We also a few years ago organized some farmers markets on the state house lawn. So I'm really excited to kind of figure out what the next iteration of engaging the public um, in that way around um, Vermont agriculture will be. And I live in Essex Junction, so I love going to the farm show in the Champlain Valley Fair every year. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Kyla, do you, I don't know if you had a chance to even introduce yourself. You got us all going. Yeah, hi all, my name is Kyla Bedard. I actually work for Vermont Organic Farmers. I'm a certification specialist there for dairy, but I am wearing a bit of a different hat today. I'm also the vice president on the farm show board. So I, along with Julie, this has been a collaborative effort, um, have helped organize this session. So thank you all for being here. We really appreciate your participation. Awesome. And Leslie, oh, a name from the past. Hi, Mary. Nice hi. To see you. <laughs> um, and hi, Julie. Hi, a few other people that I know that, and obviously Kyla and Dave. Um, so I, my name is Leslie and I work for Delaney Meeting and Event Management. Uh, we are actually the company that has been contracted by the farm show to help with logistics and all the, those sorts of details. Um, I do also have a long history in local food and interest in local food and agriculture in Vermont, but that's just kind of my own personal interest. So uh, I'm here just to see what you guys are talking about and make sure that I'm in the loop. Thank you. Awesome. And Liz. Hi, I'm Liz Kenton with the AVM Extension 4-H out of the Brattleboro office serving statewide kind of broadly with agricultural workforce development, which is tractor safety, gardening, farm to school kind of stuff. Um, and a lot of my colleagues are heavily involved in their local fairs and field days. So I'm here mostly to eavesdrop, but I might have some ideas. Okay, thank you. Teresa. Hi, hello, um, Teresa Snow with Salvation Farms, uh, born and raised in Morrisville, Vermont. That's where our, our main office for our organization is. Um, and here um, to be similar to Liz, is just kind of see what the conversation is and to offer some perspective because um, I love farming and farmers. Fantastic, and Vera. Hi everyone, my name is Vera. I work at Shelburne Farms with something called the Farm-Based Education Network. Um, and I live in, live in Charlotte currently and grew up going to the Addison County field days. Um, and I'm just really overwhelmed by, um, I don't know, brain power, heart, like all the hours collectively, all the hours that have gone into ag education in the state that's right here in this group of 17 people, just really overwhelming and awesome. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Now, did I miss anybody? I was trying to go through the list, but somebody could have snuck in. If you didn't get a chance, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself and introduce yourself. And if not, then we're going to jump right in here and... Um, Uh, oops, wait a minute. That's not the screen I want to share with you. Hang on. I'm going to do this so you can actually see me. And, um, okay, let me get my chat open so I can see that. So what I'm going to do is regardless of what your primary hat is, this is Vermont, we all wear multiple hats. So I'd like you to, for a minute, just imagine, and I don't care if it's the farm show, the field days, any other event that you've got in mind, but what I'm going to ask you to do is just think about, you know, the strengths or the most valued aspects of it from a farmer vendor 
participant, or I'm sorry, farmer vendor perspective. So somebody who's coming to be at this for the sake of providing education, selling product, educating consumers, uh, showing animals. Um, I'm going to ask you to put that hat on first. Uh, and what we're going to be doing, we're using a little app called Padlet. Um, and I'm going to try really hard to keep up with the notes. So um, if you all want to go ahead, when I, I'm going to give, when I give you the go signal, you can just unmute yourselves and, and we'll try it this way. And if it gets too chaotic, then we'll go back and do sort of a roll call thing. But I'd really love to have everybody participate in this. So we're going to spend about, um, well, let's see, we're going to spend about 10 minutes I think on this and see how we can how we can make that work. So okay. So again, just take one just take one minute, 30 seconds, uh, go into your head a little bit. Again, put that hat on. you are the farmer or the vendor. And I want you to think about you know the strengths and or most valuable aspects of these kinds of engagements, these kinds of opportunities. And as you can see, I put an example up there, but if nobody thinks this is fun, then we can go ahead and take that away. So go ahead and get, think. I'm going to give you uh, just a, a minute, well, actually 40 seconds now. Okay. And now if we wanna just go ahead and again, just feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself um, um, and share an idea, that would be terrific. Again, we're looking at strengths or most valuable at valued aspects of these kinds of events from the farmer vendor perspective. So Mary, as a farmer, I found going to the farm show and to field days, it was a way to connect with fellow farmers and have conversations um, outside of our places of work um, as a strength. All right. I think that- yeah, I'd agree, direct connections of all kinds. Sorry, Teresa, go ahead. That's okay. Um, we're Again, we're probably pair up very in line with each other, I was thinking just the diversity of exposure that you get face-to-face. Um, uh, -face. All right. I was thinking that you get to see uh, maybe new people, businesses, or services in the ag world that maybe you hadn't heard about. And so you can learn about new things in your line of work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also being able to actually see and um, touch, review, look yeah. at new pieces of equipment and such. Yeah, yeah. I, this is Dave. I, I think for, for the vendors, it, the value of the farm show is being able to uh, vendors, I mean, equipment dealers, but also educational uh, organizations like UVM Extension, uh, an opportunity to meet face to face uh, with potential customers uh, and consumers of, of the information. And I know la uh, two years ago, the farm show was exploring doing a virtual event because of, because of COVID. And I had a conversation with an equipment dealer and essentially what he said, he, he was not a big fan of a virtual event because so much information is, av is available online. But what he valued was the, that face-to-face -face contact 
uh, in conversation with a real person, uh, a real farmer. That was what he as a vendor valued. The digital connections were available all the time, but that face-to-face -face connection was what he valued the most. And I, I think that's an important, important lesson. And, and, and the, in, terms of, in terms of the farm show, and I'm assuming for the other fair, it, it's an opportunity to, for both the consumer uh, and the vendor uh, to, re to receive value, to, to learn something, uh, to gain something face-to-face. Uh, -face. And, and uh, I don't think we can put enough value on that. Certainly important. I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, as this, this is Jill from Fish and Sea Vermont. Thinking outside of, of my own hat and going to fairs and events, um, you know, large stuff. It is. It's that hands-on ability to see and talk directly with somebody about a piece of equipment that you get the best answers from, you get the best information from. Um, and the same with, you know, you get the stuff in the mail. You, we all know you see the flyers that come in from the various companies or whatnot, or you see something, you know, now on Facebook and ads, whatever. And it's always, oh, I'll look at that later. I'll look at that later. And you never get to it. Uh, so being able to go to something like this in person and see them, talk to them, it, it, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like the, the person, in-person experiences. I, I, I remember right. a few, oh. No, I was just going to say, we've had quite a few people talking about Farm Show. Anybody want to speak to the field day experience as a, as a vendor, as farmer, their most valued aspects? I would Seems say like there's a, go ahead, Dan. Uh, I would say from our point of view, if we do a, uh, just kind of like a survey of people of, you know, their major reason for coming to the fair, it's always about the connection. It's coming there to, to see people, to see their neighbors, to see people they only see once a year, but it's all about the connection. I agree. I don't know quite how to phrase it, but there's like a, a culture and community aspect. And it's good for you know customers and visitors too. They feel Vermonty if they go to the fair of whatever size. And farmers get it to get off the farm and talk to each other and be part of a bigger thing. It's kind of like, you know, you, if you go to a protest, it's not going to change anything that day, but you're getting together with a lot of people in your same world and kind of recharging. So there's that, I don't know, spiritual community culture aspect to it. I, I remember a, a couple of years ago approaching people as to why they were, they, what was important to them about the farm show. And uh, what she said was, it's, it's meeting my neighbors, my friends, people I hadn't seen for a few years uh, in a different environment. And that, and that was sort of, to her, this person I spoke to, that was the most important part of, of it. That, that, it. Yep, hearing a lot about those connections. Okay, um, now I'm going to ask you to uh, think, again, still from the farmer, vendor, exhibitor perspective, about the challenges and the obstacles that make it harder to be at these events. Um, and it seemed as though during the introductions, every one of us had spent some floor time at these events one way or another. So we probably have some up close and personal experience. So just take again about 30 seconds just to center your brains around that. And again, I just, just to kick us off, I put a lot of time away from the business because I heard Diane say that um, during her introduction. And I think that's probably a, one, a big obstacle. So feel free to go ahead and give me your thoughts. I, 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 
I would just say that for, for a lot of the, especially the smaller exhibitors uh, at the farm show, if, you, if you're an exhibitor at the farm show, you have to staff your booth all day for three days. And for a small company with maybe one or two people, uh, that's, a, that's a heavy lift. And I've had conversation with a, a, a small business and he said he comes to the farm show, he's there all day. And then he's working to 11 or 12 o'clock at night, trying to fulfill orders uh, that have come in to online or uh, by phone uh, during the day. So, so I think for the smaller vendors or exhibitors, that's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with Dave on that. Um, this year in our pocket building, which is our main vendor building, we allowed them to not provide staff for their booth the whole time. So normally, if you're an exhibitor at the fair, you have to staff your booth from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's, it's a big undertaking, and it's hard for one person to be there all day. And even if you switch it out, it's, it's still pretty tough to be in that building the whole day. So we allowed them to not staff it the whole time, but we did encourage them to, to have it staffed in the evening when we have our largest crowds. I think for the most part, it went pretty well. I mean, our, our biggest complaint was that with COVID, they just didn't have enough employees to cover it. So I think that's, you know, from our point of view, people going to the fair like to have somebody in that booth when they walk by it. So, you know, if you're trying to supply the people who are going, paying money to get into the fair, then you would like to have somebody in the booth. But on the other hand, I think it went pretty well that they left their booth in a manner where you could collect any information you wanted. And uh, you know you could leave a note if you wanted them to contact you. So it's kind of a kind of a trying to meet in the middle and, and mm -hmm. to increase as many vendors as we could. So let me let me push on this just a little bit because I'm hearing I'm hearing that it's a lot of time, but is it, tell me more, I want to hear more about like, what are the, what are the actual challenges and obstacles? Is it that I physically have to be away from my farm for eight, 10, 12 hours, or is it correct? That's, that's too the, much yeah. people time or because as, as an exhibitor, that's my problem is that I am an introvert and it is, ex it's exhausting for me right. to be at the farm show or at the field days for See, Teresa's laughing. Somebody else gets it. <laughs> I think there's a lot of a lot of introverts in this room because I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What else? But that it's is so it. It that really is it. I think is it's a lot of time away. Not only for away from your your home business, and you've either gotta if you do online orders, you know, put up that yeah, I'm gonna be gone during this time. I know a girl. Uh, that owns a store up in Maine and she goes to the Freiburg fair mm -hmm. and that's what she does. She does online ordering and mail order and she lets all her customers know and she has it up on her website that, Hey, during the fair, no orders are going to go out. You know, you can still order things on the website and everything and it'll come into our database, but nothing is going to be shipped because we are going to be gone to the Freiburg fair. Um, and for her, it works, you know, it's, it's a niche hobby. So it, it's easy to deal with. Um, and even for the larger, you know, spaces, getting the people to be able to be there to, to man the booth for four to eight hours a day, you know, plus the drive times and everything, it really does, um, like you, like you all said, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, especially if you're introverts, which a lot of, a lot of us like, you know, being on the farm, being out, what's kind of where we like our, we, we like the animals. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a long day, even if you're not an introvert talking that much you know all day long to people does get tiring um yeah. so mm -hmm. it, it does make for long days and if you need if you're a small person you know small operation and you got one or two of you uh having someone cover your booth so you can run and grab lunch um you know that that can be hard and and sometimes you got a friend that comes along and and hey can you sit here for five minutes while i run and grab lunch or can you go <laughs> run and grab lunch for me um, <laughs> Yep. that's that's the way you know yet you, you have to do it sometimes yeah. I think so, oh <laughs> Mary yeah. I was going to add cost um, uh, thank you the, I was just you read my mind farm, Julie farm show um and then for field days um I think it's it's a it's a challenge to 
involve youth, to, to have a youth audience um, in a structured way, schools out of session. Um, and I think, yeah, it'd be nice to have more youth involvement. Um, and sometimes that's hard to organize. So another one following on the youth piece of, I don't know quite how to phrase it, but that going to the, if people aren't already in the farming scene, um, then there might not be a connection to going to the farm show and field days. Um, so youth getting involved, you know, you might go, oh, hang out at the fair, play one game, pet something. Um, but there's not like an intermediate entry point. There's if you're like really serious about animals, you're raising, you're leasing, you're showing, then you're probably already involved in the conversation. But there's, I don't think there's a really place between zero and all in that youth get engaged besides just kind of coming through and maybe playing a game. Um, this is uh, farm, farm show related as a, as an organizational vendor, I think it speaks to both some of the opportunities, but then some of the challenges. It was interesting to see Dave put up, you know, that the actual purpose of the farm show is, you know, there's a piece about education. There's the, um, it's a, it's a place for the associations to meet. Um, and then of course, you know, kind of the equipment and, and vendor side. Um, and all of those things speak to me in different ways for when I go to the farm show and what I want to, who I want to talk to. I want to make sure I try to get to those association meetings because it's really valuable to hear um, what's being said in, in, in there. And then also I need to yeah be at my booth. I've got a small staff, so we got to make sure we're kind of serving an educational purpose, which is great because uh, we do get exposed to an audience that, you know, I think is, is something nor people that we normally don't get to talk to and kind of connect with at a more community level. Um, and so it's just hard. It's hard to decide um, for me, like what, you know, what day should I be there and who's, who's going to be there, which days um, so that I can be delivering most valuable things on the education side. And then also participating in those association meetings um, and, and yeah, and so I feel like it's both a long day, but then it's also hard to predict, like, what am I, what am I going to get each day and what can I expect from it? Like, who's going to be there? Um, and, and where should I then direct my attention to, uh, give, given what the audience might be. And, it, and then I think that's just another thing is that the audience does vary day by day. We kind of, sometimes we joke around like, you know, oh, day two is like, the, the day to be there because <laughs> usually you get a lot of people going going across your booth um, and day one might be a little slow or that's a day you kind of try to to network with uh, with other vendors and things like that so I, I think it's 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 sort of two sides of the same coin of the opportunities and challenges yep absolutely okay I have one well, more question that we have to move on but oh I'm sorry go ahead oh I was gonna say it was the farm show I mean let's face it we also always have to deal with mother nature so while we oh. think one day might be better than the day before, we'll have a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always watch a weather report because that, you know. Guaranteed. Well, we do the traditionally have, have a, we do have a snowstorm or an ice storm during farm show. That's kind yeah. of tradition. <laughs> I've kind of planned my life. I'm like, oh, here's the farm show. We're going to have a storm that week. And everyone looks yeah. at me. I'm like, guaranteed. And we do. <laughs> so let me just ask one more question for, and this is probably more for the farmers in the, in wearing that hat is what about the regulatory issues and regulatory demands of, of exhibiting and bringing animals into the farm? Is that a, is that a barrier or a challenge at all? Is that keeping some people away or no? Yeah, I don't know in terms of dairy and um, I don't see that as being a problem. Um, I don't know in terms of other animals yeah. to be exhibited. I would Maybe. guess it's more of a problem for out-of-state folks who are bringing their animals to exhibit in Vermont. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's, historically there, there have not been a lot of uh, animal exhibits at the at the farm show. Uh, I know Vermont Tech has been great over the past few years bringing a couple of dairy calves up for the show, and and I, and I really appreciate that. And we have a Morgan horse there every day. And Shelburne Farms brings a few sheep and goats in. Uh, 
which I think is, you know, if, if you're going to have a farm, if you're going to have a farm show, you got to have a couple animals around. You do kind of have to have those animals. And I, that's I, where I, that, yeah. you can always tell where they are. Cause that's where the people are. That's yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, all I, right. We're I do move. know this year um, with some of the fairs, um, I work a lot with one of the, the local large animal vets here in central Vermont. Um, and they were out straight doing last minute Coggins tests on the horses and livestock testing and getting the paperwork done because so much didn't happen last year that no one did it earlier in the year like they normally do. Um, so I do know this year that was a little bit of a challenge was getting all the correct paperwork to be able to attend the shows and events and stuff this year. Fair enough. All right. So now we're going to shift into the fun part. That was the, uh, and we're going to just think again from the perspective of your farmer vendor, and then we're going to switch sides of the table, but uh, opportunities. So, you know, what, where are the opportunities? And I think um, Carrie mentioned a couple of, uh, you know, sort of media opportunities and getting sort of the word out and creating sort of a more of a, um, um, but that might fit better on the other, when we get to the attendee side, but what, what are you thinking? And again, take 30 seconds to organize your thoughts and we'll be thinking about sort of, you know, and again, nothing's off the table at this point, dream big. Okay, and I started again with one that I heard from folks, which was, you know, sort of connecting with new customers and finding, you know, new opportunities for those conversations. So in addition to that, what have you folks got for me? I think an opportunity right now is everyone's so used to being on Zoom and distributed and remote that there may be I've been thinking about this for another um, program, but to go to the farm show or a field day, you go to one place, everybody is there, that's the date, you travel to it, it's a physical location, limited in time and space. And I think an opportunity is to think about distributing how we show off and get together, which is kind of what goes on at shows and fairs. So the idea of like one farm hosting two or three neighboring kids or businesses and using video or zoom or other remote technology um it's great to get together physically and that's a lot of the advantage of it but i think our our remote distributed communication in the last 18 months is an opportunity to think about additional formats not replacing everyone gets together for a couple of days but maybe additional complementing the really big part of the event you know, the whole month leading up to it or a couple weeks after there's like echoes and ripples in smaller uh, locations. I wonder too about maybe broadening the tent pin, so to speak, in terms of related industries, whether they're, um, and maybe this is already happening, but and I'm just not familiar with it, but you know, the Food Venture Center, incubators, the Intervale, all of those Shelburne Farms, um, all the, the things that are related to agriculture that that maybe in the past, you know, it isn't a farm or, a, or a, you know, equipment, but it's, it's another part of the pipeline where agricultural products meet your average citizen or might inspire a business. Um, and that we want the public to connect to agriculture because it touches them. And, and get them excited or involved or conversing about it. So how would a field days or a farm show facilitate that? So it would be broadening an objective in terms of the scope or the outreach or I don't know, it's kind of rattling around there. Okay. Okay. Kira, you just kind of made me think, and still hanging out on the last question. Um, I didn't realize that, I'm so embarrassed to say, I've never been to the Lamoille, or Lamoille County 
field days. And I never realized that it was our county fair. I always, we always went to like the Champlain Valley Fair. And as a kid, it was like, oh, I'm going for the rides, right? And then as a <laughs> teenager, I'm going for the rock and roll concert and the ride. So then it was like, oh, wait, they have animals. That's great. And vegetables. And like, there's this whole other heart really of the fair. And I'm, and I'm wondering, one, is that a challenge with the smaller um, county field days that sometimes the message is lost um, and is an opportunity, like we don't, ha we have farmers markets, but we aren't like European countries or other nations where we have open air markets on a much more regular basis where people shop like on a daily or every other day basis for their fresh food. Could, could th there be a fresh food type market like at the entry point of all yeah. of our fairs so that maybe even people can come in and shop before they even get their entry like into um, right. the fair itself. So or right. even they could get dinner there. Like what Addison County, you said you had the Vermont food products. You had one night where you had dinner. Well, have dinner every night and that that's part of the pitch, you know, bring your family. You know, invite a school for a lunch at the at the field days or the farm show and highlight, meet the farmer who grew the food or, or you know, you could try to, you know, reach broader into the community, to the families, to the schools, to, you know, to the assisted living. Could, you know, they bring a bus and have, have, a, have a lunch. You're making me think even like a summer camp associated with each county field days or fair. There you go. There you go. Um, but I love also that idea of a meal of like if our vendors are more food trucks, like local food. But yeah. I mean, again, the, the challenge being a lot of folks, uh, you know, price is an issue for a lot of people in our communities. So, well, then could you get businesses to, to, you know, get some benefit to them. And then they, they provide, uh, it's not scholarships, but, you know, tickets for a family meal. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, just somehow to sub subsidize it by getting the business community there. I love that idea. Come to the fair, get a meal on your ticket. It says which business sponsored it. There you go. Hey. I'm moving these over to opportunities for attendees because it feels like we've shifted a little bit from the farmer vendor hat of like, what's, what are the opportunities for us? And right. um, I'm going to go back to one that Diane brought up earlier, which was, um, you know, not requiring so much attendance, not requiring somebody to be there every single minute at their table. So, and creating some flexibility. So, because it feels like that might be something that would be useful for some people. Well, what about Liz's idea for the tech? If I can't be at the table, can I be a face on a computer, but I'm still, I'm at my office and somebody just taps the computer and I pop up and I answer their <laughs> question. And I'm back at my Instant own. consult at the farm health table. We had, you know, various healthcare folks answering questions, doing screenings in person, but there's some things that maybe if you have a booth, go have a conversation with a counselor while you're there. Yep. Yeah, we've talked about, we're talking about that for next year or for this well, year. And, and even what might help is, you know, working with the local 4-H groups and having the 4-H kids, if they're not showing that day, um, coming and being, thinking of like, you know, the Grammys and all that, being a seat saver that, okay, you need someone to come and man your booth for five minutes while you go run here, or you need a half hour to make a, you know, important phone call to catch up with this vendor or whatever. Yeah. You could have these kids come and just kind of man the booth, just be there for very, you know, basic answers of, you know, they'll be back in a second. Here's a flyer, you know, whatever, hand out basic information it might be a good, good help. Yeah. And, you know, get the kids out and doing stuff like that, get some of them involved. So, yeah. so maybe, maybe like a, a team of uh, floaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the pages, like the pages at the. That's exactly what I was gonna yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you, pages. Get, you know, the honor society at the local high schools. Honor society members come, and they learn something about the business, and you know, the week before, and then they they become kind of um, ambassadors 
for the farm show or for the field days for that business. And what about, you know, inviting childcare centers, do a field trip to, to this event. And then, you know, the event needs to make something for them, you know, have a little scavenger hunt, have a little, um, puzzle that they have to fill in and then they, you know, get an ice cream or something. I'm wondering with that, with that idea of, of like the pages, so to speak, Future Farmers of America, 4-H, but also the tech centers, um, yep. you know, bringing in the agricultural um, or culinary, yeah. um, or even automotive, the mechanic, like any of those industries that support this that could support or engage in the sector. Yeah. Well, and that also, again, going back to opportunities, that kind of exposes kids that may not have been uh, exposed to a dairy farm in the past, a chance yeah. to see what actually happens at dairy farm, what equipment's involved, because that is something hard. That's a very select group of vendors that'll work with those folks. And especially with horticultural, that's a whole new ball of wax that they can get into. Yep. I mean, if you had, if somebody could bring some little chicks, if you got a little daycare, those kids would be out of their minds, those little chicks. You know, it would just, yep. be, they, they'd just be beyond themselves and, you know, and. Baby animals work. It does yeah. work. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to call time out on this because you guys are getting crazy here now. So <laughs> I want to move back. I'm going to now put your attendee hat on and we've all been attendees at these things. We've all gone there with our little goodie bags and picked up all the freebies and everything. So, um, and I'm not going to ask you to, uh, right now, we'll just do strengths and challenges, and I'll try to figure out, you tell me which column it belongs in, but we'll try to, to do, um, I'm not usually into killing birds, but we'll try to kill two birds with one stone here. Yeah. So take a minute and uh, collect your thoughts. And again, you're shifting your hat. Now you are the attendee, okay? You're the other person. You're the person that has to find a place to park. You're the person who has to pay to get in at the gate. You're the person who um, is gonna walk around with your family or on your own or whatever. I want more food opportunities. There's, there's not enough, you know, if you don't have, if you're not going to the dairy banquet, you know, you've got one place that has the food that maybe that's not what I want to feed my kids. Uh, where's the local Vermont food all the time? Um, this is a challenge. Yeah, attendee challenge um, is that it's dur it's during it's during the week. Or I'm talking about the farm show. You know, during the week, during the day. Uh, so you you gotta take a day off, um, uh, and and so I I think generally the audience tends to trend a little older because of that. Um, you know, there's um, and and this conversation about sort of school groups and stuff. I know that there's a day that um, FFA students are brought in, but what you know what about other school groups and opportunities uh, where that can be an educational opportunity as as was being discussed. Um, so that's, I think, maybe on the opportunity side. Um, but yeah, I, I do think about, you know, may, yeah, sort of figuring out how to make that work as an attendee is you got to, you got to take off of work or whatever it is, take the kid out of school. Um, so that is, that is one issue. So would Jake, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but would the flip side of that being having a weekend a day included or? I, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I, th I think I know as the exhibitor, I, we're like, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, no, I don't want to do that on Saturday, but I yeah. Think, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's Mary, you're, yeah, you're taking sort of the logical uh, inference there is that um, I think it should be open for consideration because, because yeah. of the limitations. Yeah. That you have uh, this, speaking of for the, the farm show, that's one of the conversations we're having is, you know, the farm show in 1957 set up for farmers for a farmer to the Wednesday and Thursday is perfect sense. I mean, right. for a farmer, every day is pretty much the same. You know, you, you milk cows seven days a week. Uh, but Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, if you've got uh, kids or you have a full time job, uh, that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we're having that conversation. But then I, I spoke to a large equipment dealer about uh, an event on Saturday and Sunday. 
And he, he looked at it from, that's going to cost me an awful lot more money mm. to pay my staff overtime and to be transporting my heavy equipment on the road. Uh, it just... It, so, uh, just so, the, there's the lots of things of balance. Uh, yeah, with, but, but I agree. Uh, yep. and being there on a Saturday, offering a Saturday farm show, uh, would would really increase our audience. Uh, right. Yeah. That's well. So, if the goal is to increase consumer traffic, right. then we have to meet consumers where they're at. Yeah. I think so. Right. That's from a marketing perspective. That's basic 101. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So I have an attendee strength, Mary. Okay. I think um, all the contests and shows that, that are part of, of fairs um, and field days, um, I think are, are really attractive uh, to folks. Um, Get them involved, yeah. You can do more of that. I mean, if you did the farm show Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or, you know, and get that one, make that Saturday just you know, community day, come. Just have- I will add uh, an attendee strength, I think, is when there are um, food vendors or, you know, agricultural producers with samples, really getting to try new products before you might see them in the store when you might not, you know, you might not want to spend $8 on a new cheese, but if you tried it at a fair or at consumer night at the farm show and you know you like it, that's going to, change your purchasing habits moving forward and that opportunity for maybe folks who don't go to farmers markets as much to you know meet some producers and meet some farmers um can i think kind of push you know move the needle a little bit on purchase local food purchases i think it's a great idea Teresa. have a have a, a farmer's market at the event at the field days at the farm show there is a farmer's market there is a place where you can go literally buy the vendor's products, then it would be more worth their while to man their booth. Yeah, I, I think that there is a there is a risk to also be to be set up for market if folks aren't and expecting that. Um, so I think it would just the for att attendees, there just need to there need to be the right kind of marketing and communication that that's happening, and so not to um, negatively impact the farmer, vendor, food producer. Um, and again, I think that if it isn't connected with entry to the fair, folks could come and then you know choose. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then that gets into a lot of regulatory issues, but we're not, you know, that's that's for the next level of brainstorming and thinking. So strengths or, or highest values and challenges, again, from the attendees perspective, is cost an issue? I think cost can be a deterrent, certainly, and it could be an issue depending on the size of your family member and the, the cost of the event. And Dave, I think I heard you say that the farm show is going to be charging admission this year for the yeah, first time. Is that correct? For, for the very, very first time, uh, the farm show is going to be charging uh, admission. Folks will be able to go online and purchase a ticket. It's going to be $4. Uh, $2 of that $4 will be donated to the uh, 2 plus 2 program at UVM and Vermont Tech. Uh, but, you know, that's a big change uh, for people who have always come to the farm show with free parking and free admission. Uh, at, at, but I, I think we've just felt financially we had to do it. It was it was like, you know, it's a difficult well, choice, but we we had fed, ooh, we had to we had to do it. We're hoping it it won't be a bit a, a huge barrier for people. I also just want to mention the other reason it was important um, for the farm show to consider doing tickets is has to do with just um, knowing how many people come, knowing who comes, being able to reach back out to those people again, just sort of as a basic um, management side tool for going forward with the farm show, from my point of view. Makes sense to me, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, okay, again, strengths and or most valued. Um, nobody put, nobody's mentioned fun yet under the attendee strengths. Shouldn't that be one of the- I was gonna, 
mention um, my the first thing I do when I get to the farm show is get my chocolate milk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would say under strengths, or I forgot what else was there, um, is that it's kind of like strawberries in the sense that it comes around only a certain time of the year. And so um, if it's a tradition for people to attend, you know, I think that that's something um, that is really valuable. Like you can go to the movie theater, except for when COVID happened, like you can go to the movie theater any day of the week, but you can only go to the fair when it comes to town. So I think that's a real strength. Okay. I, I just have one more kind of challenge I'm thinking about. I think one thing that I feel like I've noticed is just a challenge with the marketing of the farm show and, and field day, fair and field days towards, I feel like there's a really, there's opportunity as someone mentioned for like demographically, um, there's a strong focus on like kids events, but I feel like um, folks who are like teenagers, young adults um, and like middle-aged folks, I think it can be hard. I feel like there, it's a challenge sometimes in finding clarity and marketing around these events um, in terms of like what the value proposition is for attendees, um, specifically consumers or people who are not themselves farmers um, to figure out what they're gonna get out of it. Um, specifically in thinking about the farm show, I feel like it's a, like a primarily a farmer event. Um, and so having an opportunity for the public to come in and meet farmers um, I just think it, it's there, there's a challenge there in terms of like, okay, what are the what is the public really gonna gain from this? If they're only going towards the animal booth, like how are, how are they strategically gonna be actually meeting other folks within the industry, um, meeting people from you know different booths? So that's something that comes up for me is like, is is the is the net so broad that we're not really like thinking strategically about how we're gain, engaging consumers? I'm going to turn that into two different ones because I think there were two different important points there. All right. You all are being very respectful of my slow typing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so Mary, I had a question maybe for both Abby and um, Diane and wondering if, if it's a limitation about who is helping you organize the, your field days. You know, if, if you had more people on your board, on your committees, is there more potential for your, fair, for your field days in different areas? And I don't know where that fits into this conversation, but. <laughs> Do you just for clarification, Julie, are you talking about like the the committee that plans this? The, the yeah, board? I'm sure Should there's there just... be consumer voices, or are there consumer voices on the board? Yeah, I mean, and and consumer time, not just ideas. Right. And would that be helpful? I don't know. We'll have to ask Diane and Abby about that. I don't know. From uh, the Addison County Fair and Field Days, we have a 12 member board, and. Uh, we all represent a different part of the community. I don't know if we did that intentionally when the board was first came about, but you know, we have a, a lawyer, a doctor, we have people who own their own business. We have people who have a farm food stand, a couple of dairy farmers, um, a sheep farmer and two vegetable people. So I think from, from the broad spectrum of what we have in Addison County, most of the businesses are kind of covered. Um, we do break out into groups and each one of the directors is responsible for 
putting their group together. So that group goes out and gets other people from the community and then they bring it back to the board. So for, for Addison County, I think it's worked pretty well. Um, going back to one of the other things that we do is uh, we actually work a lot with um, our SVP seniors and they're kind of our on-call people, uh, fair week. So they give us a list of names and if somebody had to leave their booth, then that's a person that would go and kind of take care of that booth while that person kind of steps out. When you're in the summertime, you, you really don't have the advantage of, you know, having school kids come in and do much of anything for you. They're all on summer break and it's hard to get that wheeled in. Uh, we do uh, special events for the summer camps and the daycares. So we offer them, uh, actually we, we offer the kids free admission and, uh, we did do the uh, the scavenger hunt uh, that that actually went really really well. We put a book together and there was ten places on the fairgrounds that they had to go to, and if they got their book filled, then they went to the final one, which at the Lions Place, handed in their book and got a free creamy. So it was one way to make them go to other businesses other than just going to the rides, and uh, we thought that was that was a big plus. Um, we did not do it this year, and uh, I think part of that was uh, it was kind of COVID related, and uh, we just didn't have the, the staff to get it all going in time, but that's kind of where we're at. I, I think we do a pretty decent job as far as, you know, looking for more help from that point of view. We're always looking for ways to expand, and from when we look at it from a demographic point of view, by far the group that we have the most trouble keeping interested are the 16 to 22. Uh, we can get them when they're older and get them when they're younger, but those, those guys in the 16 to 22 age, we just don't see a lot of them floating around the fairgrounds. Abby, do you wanna jump in and say a little bit about how you're, you're planning your board works? So our board has 15 people on it currently, and we do struggle to keep those people and to have new ones brought in. A lot of our board members have been on our board now for 15 or 20 years. So there's not a whole lot of new ideas that are coming in as to how we can engage a new group of people. Um, a lot of our board members are older, they're past dairy farmers, they have owned their own businesses, and so I think that their kind of ideas of the fair haven't quite shifted with the times that we're in. So I think that's definitely something that we're going to have to change in the upcoming years just to keep people coming in. Um, I think that, Diane, your idea of having a book with a scavenger hunt would be very popular for our crowd and it gives them the push to go interact with the kids in the 4-H building or people over by the horse poles, um, anything to really get people over there. So I will take that idea and bring it back to my board. Okay, well, our work here is done then. We're, we're good, we got one idea off the ground. <laughs> All right, anything else? And just for the good of the order, we'll open it up so you can talk from the farmer perspective, the vendor perspective, the attendee perspective. Um, while you're engaging your brain. Um, one thing did just occur to me from all of your good ideas is we were talking about those tweens and those early young adults. And one of the things that seems to really engage them is opportunities to use their cell phones. So maybe if there was a contest doing a commercial or doing a short film about a fair or a farm show or something, that would get some of those young folks doing what they love to do best. Um, and you would get some good marketing stuff maybe that you could use because some of them are quite good at their uh, with their toys. A it could be for the whole show or it could be for one vendor, like with the floater or assistant idea, like come up with one product they like, like drink all the chocolate milk you want if you make a video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sort of just remembering now we did a we did a scavenger hunt at the farm show one year and the and, and there was a prize uh if you went to all the different booths and found the things uh cabot had donated i think like a, a huge cheese box um or something something to that effect or cheese worth 100 bucks um so i think anytime you've got 
an incentive to win something um, that can always increase the excitement and participation. And, uh, and that's another way potentially for you know, a food vendor, vendor uh, a farm in the area to promote and market themselves as well. So um, just another kind of opportunity, I think, on both, both the vendor and the attendee side. One opportunity that's coming up for me is I'm thinking about um, like learning opportunities that could maybe be targeting towards that um, young adult population. I feel like there's a lot of interest with the current state and the climate in um, focusing on homesteading. Um, and so I think there are a lot of people who are wanting to learn at least a little bit about agriculture. Um, and so if that could maybe be integrated into farm and field days, I could see that being a thing that would draw um, potentially young people or people who want to just learn a little bit about agriculture, learn a little bit about um, how to, you know, raise goats, how to build your own garden. So Gina, do you, are you talking about like little mini workshops kind of things or little? Yeah. Yeah. Just cause I'm thinking like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a, a way to engage, engage people um, differently. I, I think that's a, a good idea. Um, also being able to, like with the, with the livestock itself, you know, I know in the past, uh, the milking competition, stuff like that were always popular at a lot of the, the smaller fairs and stuff. Uh, maybe you'll try your hand at driving a team of oxen, um, you know, driving a horse around or, you know, anything like that where you can get your hands on to physically touch the animals. I mean, obviously it takes a very special animal to be able to put up with this. Um, and they can only do it for short bursts before they get driven nuts by everybody. Um, but it is a neat experience, especially if it's something you haven't done. I grew up mostly doing horses and dealing, dealing with dairy cows. Uh, and a few years ago, I went down, um, ironically, to go see Gail Billings, who I you know, grew up with. I was in school with her son, but I'd never done anything with oxen. And she, a couple of my friends wanted to try it. So we all went down there and she let us drive for oxen around. Uh, so it was a neat experience to do something completely different out of my comfort zone that I, you know, I haven't done before. Um, so something else to kind of look at, you know, how can you get them involved with doing that and getting people to touch, touch the livestock, especially kids who never have before. Okay. I think going back to trying to get that 16 to 22 age group involved is a lot of our top events are things that happen on the track. So our truck and tractor pulls, demolition derby, ATV drag races. Is there a way that we can incorporate either like the advertising of farms or something to, to that point to kind of get the word out there at those big events? Because those events happen mostly at night and they're not spending time walking around the cattle barns or the horse barns. So is there a way that we can incorporate that into these events? Great. Okay, any other final thoughts before we wrap this up and move on to next steps? I wish the tractor dealers would put their buckets on the ground. Darn it. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell them different when I'm walking around, but it makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? In the chat, Gina put the job fair. I don't know if that was already um, noticed and commented on. It's yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like talking a lot so I apologize so I put it in the chat I um just another thought that came up is thinking about young people who are a lot of young people who want to get involved in the ag industry in some way shape or form um that could be a way to draw ag you know career related folks either to the um farm show or at another you know fair and field days to meet people in the industry and uh, learn about different employment opportunities or yeah. learning opportunities whether it's you know yeah. having spent the last four years knee deep in labor issues i think that's an outstanding idea 
Um, any other final thoughts wrap up? Um, something that I have heard from our local farmers is that they're very hesitant to bring their animals mm -hmm. to the fair because of the loud entertainment that we have, especially horses on uh, tractor pull night. They are very loud and they're afraid that they're going to spook them. So we've tried, we've been trying to see, can the horses be brought in at a later date so that we don't have this problem. I don't know if other fairs are running into it, but that's just something we've seen. We've not had that issue at Addison. Um, the horse area has a little distance from the tractor pad area, but for some reason there, there has not been any issue. And Jim Canna happens on Tuesday night, which I think would probably be the horses that are would maybe be most spooked. And uh, we had demolition derby this year and, and we had no issues. So I, I guess I don't, I can't say that we've had any issues with noise and horses. It, it is noisy. I'm not a horse, but I will, I will say that it is noisy. <laughs> yeah. I got one more wild idea following on that. Um, wild. Like we're oh, talking about it. how much time it is and multiple days and you got to staff it and all that themes for different days, day one animals, day two machinery, day three business or something. Okay. At Addison, we do um, senior day is on Tuesday. So seniors all get in with their Green Mountain Passport and they also get a discount on their Vermont products dinner by showing their card. So we, we do that. You on, mean like seniors like me, not like seniors like high school seniors. Correct. Right, okay. Seniors like, <laughs> us. Seniors like us. Seasoned, seasoned veterans of life. Yeah, yeah. Experienced. <laughs> You have to have a Green Mountain passport. So I think yeah. that that would eliminate those high school seniors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we also allow to anybody that's uh, anybody showing a military badge gets in for free as well. Um, I had another question, but you made me laugh and now I forgot. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Again, I'll, I'll bring it back. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about some of the um, plenary points around regenerative agriculture and um, climate change and just uh, land stewardship, all of those things that um, I wonder what the vetting process, and this might not fall into one of these buckets, but it just has me thinking about what the vetting process is for um, accepting vendors or balancing the different kind of messaging. Um, and in that for the farm show, but then also for our field days, um, like, is there, a, is there, a, again, I don't know how these structures are organized if the farm show and field days are all part of under one umbrella, or are they all different organizations, but how could they leverage some investments to become more um, sustainably powered as well as models for, um, for, our, for, for our businesses? Um, our food-based businesses. So whether it's wind and solar or rain catchment systems, you know, there could be all sorts of modeling in our, in our field days um, properties um, for new, new and environmentally responsible technologies. Great idea. All right, my friends, you have, um, You've exhausted me. I don't know if you've exhausted you, but um, we've got some great ideas here. Um, I will invite the rest of the panel and the planning committee to speak. But my thinking is, is that um, out of all of this, we will create some sort of a report and it will go both 
uh, to any organization that's involved in the planning and nurturing of these events so that people can begin to see these ideas. My sense is, is that this is a not a first step, but a, you know, we're second or third step on the ladder, but we're not done yet. So we're going to continue to to poke and probe on this a little bit and see if we can't um, get some of these ideas to actually come see the light of day. Uh, yeah, Mary, on that on that point, I would uh, be more than happy to if if that type of report or if this information is summarized and then is asking for additional input from farm show vendors and and the fair and fair vendors. Uh, you know, I know a lot of organizations in our network are vendors at the farm show, for instance, and I would be more than happy to ask them to add in any any input to this uh, process. Um, so just just let me know if if that would be helpful, because um, I'm sure that there's a lot of ideas, maybe similar ideas that can elevate some things up the list, but there's also probably stuff that, you know, we haven't thought about that. I know there's a lot of smart people in our network that have ideas that uh, we may, may not have thought about here. So happy Excellent. to do that. Yeah, yeah perfect. I, I think that would be great. And he said that with the recording running. So there you go, folks, <laughs> my friends, we got it. Oh, no, I, br I broke the golden rule. I said, said something on record. That means. <laughs> I, my I would imagine that it would be nice to do a series of focus groups and maybe with some of the groups that Jake's talking about around yeah. the state, get a little bit more broader representation um, and help, you know, basically surface these ideas and get a few more extras. And then, yeah, I think it's, it's, we just kick it to the appropriate groups and Diane's board can take what they like and leave the rest. And right. Abby's board can take what they like and leave the rest. And the farm show can, you know, pick and choose what works for them. And um, I think it'll be an iterative process. Any other final thoughts before I give you um, a three minute bio break before the next session? <laughs> I just wanted I, I, to thank, oh, go Dave. I was just going to say, uh, in terms of like the smaller organizations at the farm show, uh, finding st staffing the booths with the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association, uh, we run a doodle poll, uh, ask people, the VSGA members to sign up for two-hour blocks to staff the booth. Uh, that's helpful, uh, and I, because I understand if you're a small volunteer organization, uh, being being able to have somebody at the booth for all day for three days is a real challenge. And uh, that, 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 that's something that VSGA has done that, it, that helps. Doesn't solve it completely, but it helps. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, and at NOFA we do something similar. I think we have probably like 10 people staffing the booth, but um, I just wanted to thank you all again for participating. I took a lot of notes during this, so I will work on compiling those, cleaning those up. Pretty sure we'll have an email list for this group so I can email those out to you all after. Um, and then I'll also share it with the Fairs and Field Days Association, the broader association as well. So again, thank you all. Thank yes. you. Thank you all again for your good thinking and enjoy the rest of your day. It is dark as a pocket here. My goodness, it feels like bedtime, but I guess not. <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Right. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mary.